pretty excited for for the one we have today. So and a lot of people joining and speaking. As some of you know, I'm uh, uh, currently in Launch House in LA. Launch House is a um, community for founders um, and yeah, where we kind of support each other and as a in uh, IRL a component to this community, also a digital one, but the onboarding to the community, spending a week with uh, living with other founders in one of the houses, either LA or New York. And we're about to finish the, um, the, the, this, the month. So the month uh, we spent together here in LA with other, um, amazing founders. And we thought this was the right opportunity to showcase the amazing talent that's living here giving them also the opportunity to speak about what they're building. The first person that I would like to introduce and kind of call on stage is Carlo. Hi, Carlo. <laughs> hey, Philippe. How's everything? Everything is good. So tell us a little bit more about what you're building and why that that important to people. Thanks, man. Yeah. Essentially, the aim behind Exhort is to give a louder voice to all the unseen and unheard talent out there. And we do so by connecting them with a more B2B world. So marketing, media, PR agencies, they need a constant supply of just the best of the best content out there. So they don't necessarily care if it's influencer-led, which ties in with our ethos. They just need a supply of content that relates specifically to their target audiences every time. And most importantly, that they can get it quickly, which is exactly what we do. Thanks, Carlo. And um, how was kind of this month to you? How did Launch House help you? And um, most importantly, how do you, what are you excited about for the coming months and the future of Exordi? Oh man, I think, I think this month was just insane for everything. Um, Launch House, both the, the staff here helped so much, but also the environment did. We were able to to close some partnerships that tripled our create account. We went from just over a hundred create more than four hundred. We also ended up tripling our client wait list, going from just, just a handful to uh, over twenty different um, clients in the wait list. And this was definitely facilitated by Launch House, both in the sense that I was able to to learn a lot um, when it comes to the Web three space, which allowed me to communicate with different. Um, creators and convince them to join Exordi, but also allow me to take a deep dive into the content world and address certain key issues that our clients face and truly convince them uh, sort of what we're doing and align themselves with our mission. And aside from that, it's just been ridiculously helpful to be surrounded by all of you guys that are really smart in different areas and just allow me to problem solve very quickly, move on to the next thing and keep growing the business. So yeah, I mean, the month has been really helpful now for the next upcoming um sort of months we have we have this good problem of having built too much our creator base and client base that we need to now improve the product to be able to handle all of the content transfers and sort of implement our matching algorithms as well so we're going to do just some more use cases do a fundraise and then build out our product doing exactly what we need to do and we'll just keep going ahead with that cool and I mean, so tell us who, what exactly are you looking for uh, or how can we help and where can people find you? So what kind of help do you, do we need if people are interested in kind of this, in your mission, on your product, where can they find you and um, what kind of help do you need? Sure. So finding me, you can either um, just follow me on Twitter, DM me there. I just got it, but I am being a lot more responsive on it. Otherwise, you can just search our um, website, which is www.xordiapp.com. And or there's also our Instagram, which has the same exact. In terms of help, um, help on just structuring a raise is uh, very useful, highly appreciated. And then if anyone knows any talented Web3 developers, um, product managers, or sales and marketing people, which we'll be looking for to expand our team with, that would also be incredibly useful. And of course, if anyone is down to share their talent and their passions, then just hop on board as a creator. Mm, very good. And two more quick questions. Um, I think the first one is you kind of discovered a lot more about Web3 
this month. And I, th I think the, a lot of people are going through the same kind of being curious and discovering web three, um, now. So what would be your kind of key takeaway or advice, um, uh, for someone else going through the same journey? So, um, either as a founder or just as a creator kind of, uh, dipping their toes into web three now. Sure. So I think the important part is not to find something that, that you're passionate about. You know, Web3 is a, is a massive ecosystem and find something that you're more interested in. For, so for me, it was around the social tokens element and the NFT space. But what I would probably advise, and maybe it goes against some of the tendencies, is don't jump on a bandwagon just because there's a bunch of hype around it. As in, don't jump to NFTs just because everyone's talking about them. Try to see the added value behind them. Try to see how that could improve either your business or just improve your knowledge around them rather than just simply jumping onto them and buying a bunch because everyone else is doing it. So my so to sum that up is find something you're passionate about and then try to really see the benefits that your specific interest in Web3 brings rather than just jumping along the hype train. Cool. So one last question before you go, and that's kind of a very quick one. Who would you invest in if you could? So you could buy their tokens. Who would you invest in? It can be someone from Launch House or someone famous or someone that no one knows. I think I would definitely go down the Launch House route and it makes more sense. And I would pick uh, both Jessica and yourself. Jessica is because, I don't know, I think she's doing something really awesome and it's going to be really fun. And she's able to take... Um, so the benefits of the, the Web3 world and apply it to something, to a real problem. And then yourself, because we share a lot of the same ethos, I think, and the philosophies that we have around the short, social tokens world and also all the upcoming talent that doesn't get seen. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for, your, for, for being here, for your time and for telling us more about uh, Exordi. And also, thank you. Thank, uh, this wasn't planned, but actually Jessica is next, uh, next, <laughs> next in line. So nice. thanks for that, uh, passing the baton. No worries. Thank you so much for organizing this. No problem. Bye-bye. Bye, Carlo. Jessica, now, Jessica, now it's your turn. Yeah, I feel so honored that Carlo would, would have invested me. You know, it really works. I talked a lot, so thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for, for being here. So. Jessica, um, I mean, Jessica, just full of energy and full of, uh, passion for what she's building. She has been working in the virtual artist world, uh, for the, the, in the past, which is, might be some a new concepts for all of you, but this idea of having virtual artists and, um, yeah. And building a fan base for virtual artists seems a bit utopian for now. And she's a super smart and passionate founder that you'll get the chance to meet now. So yeah, Jessica, tell us a bit more about Radia, what you're building and why do you think that will change uh, people's lives? Awesome. Thank you. So, um, as fully mentioned, I'm building Radia. I spent the last, uh, year and a half working in the virtual artist space at Sphere Bomb. So. Skim is the world's first virtual artist record label. And when I was there, I was the COO. So spent my year and a half there testing and launching over 15 virtual artists and really got a good grasp of what works and what doesn't. However, we really had one problem, um, which you know is the fact that 99% of artists fail. The 1% of artists, you know, human or not, uh, those artists become these multi-million dollar businesses like a Justin Bieber, et cetera. And when I say virtual artists, I'm talking about an avatar. So if you think of like the gorillas, how they're all 2D characters, you've never seen the humans behind them. Um, and that's sort of the same philosophy with a virtual artist. So, you know, saw that pain point back in November. I'm also a Web3 influencer and, you know, post on TikTok a lot about Web3 and kind of kept hearing the same sentiment in November of hearing you know, we get NFTs to an extent, but we don't understand why people are spending all this money on them when there's not that much utility for what you could do with them yet. So I've kept hearing this over and over. And then one day in November, Timbaland launched Avid Production, which was he was partnering with Four Board Apes 
to launch them as a hip hop group. And thought to myself, you know, like, holy shit, <laughs> this is this is where the virtual artist landscape's going. This also solves my audience development problem. So the audience development cost is our largest cost in music business. It can, you know, it's it's a cost that is so variable and so dependent upon you know the artists, the fan base, et cetera, that it it's it's really hard to predict. Um, and so what I'm doing is, yeah, you know, these NFT collections have little to no utility for most of the time. Um, their business model is the mint and then the secondary sales. So they're creating this huge IP, in my opinion. You know, boarding Yacht Club would be like the new Disney. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these NFTs, so like a board ape, a doodle, an alien friend, et cetera, and then building them as a virtual artist. So taking the 2D image, putting it in 3D, and what I'm doing next is then developing interactive experiences around them. So trying to build what the future of concerts will look like in Web3. Um, so why I think this matters is because we're living in a world where, you know, tokenization of everything will soon come about, but also the fact that NFTs just don't have a ton of utility right now and trying to help change that. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, uh, leave, uh, the people that are interested to, to just reach out to you and yeah. you have that, where, where, what's the best way for people to get involved with radio and what you're, you're building and helping out if they can. Definitely, um, follow radio on Twitter. Um, uh, I haven't done much of the Twitter account yet, but it's radio underscore world. And then as well, we have a landing page where we're doing signups at radio.world. That's the address. Um, we'll be launching a discord within the next month or so to start building out our community. So also be on the lookout for that. Um, but if you know, right now I'm hiring a social media intern, a community management intern. So if anyone is interested in that or knows someone that might be, please send them my way. Good. Yeah. Uh, maybe there's some, someone listening that can get, help you there. Also, I mean, follow Jessica on TikTok for some web three tips and advice, especially for the people entering the space. Um, what's your TikTok handle, by the way? I mean, there's a link my, in your profile, right? Yeah. My TikTok is Jessica E. Lawson. Cool. So yeah, I think we're, uh, the last question, the same I asked Carlo. So who would you invest in if you could, can be a, um, artist can be anyone. So who would you like to buy some of their tokens? Okay. I'm definitely, I gotta say Carlo, not because he said me, but because his business just has so much traction already and all he really needs is capital. So like this is a good place. And then additionally, you know, he could pitch my business as well as I could. And is just like really quick to pick up on things is like a fast and you know, he's only one year out of college and he's accomplished so much. So I would bet all my money on him. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. We will all buy some of Carlo tokens soon. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing, um, the beginning of your journey, which uh, I'm sure will be a very su successful one. Um, uh, up next we have Steven. He's actually very close to me right now, <laughs> but hopefully that doesn't echo here. But yes, Steven, um, is also building, uh, actually also related to music like, uh, Jessica building a music app to pay songwriters what they deserve. He'll explain more. It also has a very interesting career journey, um, which maybe we can get a bit into as well. He's done a lot of work in finance, worked retail. Now he's a founder and, uh, like many people. Many of us and maybe many people that already launched their token at Helm Protocol, they actually have very, um, like a career that has multiple threads and they experimented with multiple things. And that's kind of why having supporters and token holders actually helps you kind of do those reinvent yourself and that career. But yeah, um, focusing on Stephen, Stephen, 
Hey there. Thank you, Philippe. Yeah, I'm going to really have to work the uh, the mute button here to make sure we're not echoing. Um, and I'm really glad to follow Jess. Um, Jess and I have sat next to each other for the last month and kind of bounced ideas off each other and worked in the music space. Um, as she mentioned, she's doing a lot with NFTs. I'm a little bit um, more, I would say, you know, working just with regular payments right now and we'll eventually get to NFTs. Uh, but as Sleep mentioned, I had worked in finance out of college at Morgan Stanley. I was there for the financial crisis and I saw the way that trades were getting cleared uh, for stocks uh, through hedge funds and was really into music at the time, was going to a lot of songwriter rounds, a lot of concerts. And I kind of thought to myself, well, what if we had a trade clearing system to clear royalties when paying artists and songwriters? Um, and as I kind of went down the rabbit hole, I saw that songwriters were really struggling. I saw that the model that was created for them was built in the 1920s and 30s. Um, the three organizations that work with those songwriters are BMI, ASCAP, and CSAC. And there had uh, consent decrees put on them by the Department of Justice out of the United States government to make sure monopolies weren't created where um, songwriters and artists wouldn't get too powerful. And what happened was it created the opposite effect. It basically created a inefficient price fixing market. So, um, you know, I kind of found that problem out and had that passion for music, passion for songwriters and said, okay, this is something that I can work on. It's something that I'm really going to be in it for the long haul. Um, so after I left finance about uh, five years ago, I worked in retail and what retail allowed me to do was just work a 40 hour a week job not bring your uh, work home with you and allowed me to study uh, copyright law for those five years. I didn't realize when I was getting into a music startup that I would have to basically go to law school. Uh, but that's what happened because songwriters are tied to copyright law. Uh, the intellectual property that goes along with it makes the industry so complex and that's why there aren't good solutions for it. Um, so that's kind of where I began um, five years ago, kind of just researching the market, doing a lot of informational interviews, um, starting to build, build out an MVP and basically got it to a point uh, about two years ago where it was kind of ready to take off, but really wasn't. And then the COVID uh, pandemic happened and it shut down all of live music. And at first I thought about pivoting. I thought about looking at live stream. I thought about a couple of other different avenues. But the more and more I thought about it, I said, no, wait a minute. I'm just going to keep pedaling here during the shutdown and be a solution when we come out of this. So now, you know, hopefully we're past a little bit of the Omicron surge. We now have venues kind of opening their door again. We have songwriters. Hopefully we'll get back out on the road. So this is a great time to, you know, kind of relaunch Sandcash and work with music venues. So the ones who have to pay for these antiquated licenses and the beneficiaries of that, which is the songwriters. So what my platform does is we basically direct license with the songwriters to the venues. And we can kind of clear the money from that venue, the songwriter, a lot faster than the current lead time. Uh, the blanket license that I mentioned with these other organizations, by the time they get through all of the money and data, it can take up to nine months. So if you're working a job and someone said they were going to pay you nine months later, I think you'd probably, uh, you know, leave that job. The thing with songwriters is they're so passionate about music that they're willing to work other jobs, whether, you know, they're going to be a waiter or they're going to do service jobs just so they can keep writing. Um, and it defeats the purpose because if they're working all those other jobs, they're not spending time writing better songs. So if we finally paid them, we would give them a living wage and that would allow them to write, to co-write, to write better songs, to earn a living. Um, and that's kind of the, the goal of saying cash. Yeah. Thanks for that. I mean, it's crazy. The or to, uh, it was crazy for me to understand all of the inefficiencies that, um, yeah, are, are in, in this business and, um, uh, what you can do and to help, uh, all these people very exciting and into here. Um, what can few people kind of find more about Sankesh? What kind of, how can they help? Uh, where do you need help? Yeah, I would say in terms of finding us, um, sandcash.com. Uh, I think it's kind of helpful to look at the website because there's a lot of um, edging that needs to happen in this space. A lot of people don't know that a lot of artists don't write their own songs. A lot of people don't know that venues have to pay licensing fees on top of, you know, running the businesses that they are. Obviously, 
they've had um, less people come through their doors as capacity limits were implemented and, and mask rules. So, you know, it's really tough to be a venue owner, whether they're a bar, a restaurant, or a concert hall. So if you go to sandcash.com, we kind of educate you on that. We also talk a little bit about how we're going to solve, you know, the concert industry. And then the last part is, is the journey of the songwriter, which again, most people focus on the artists, whether it's, you know, whether they're touring or they sign big deals with brands. And a lot of times the songwriter who wrote the song for those artists are, are kind of getting uh, ignored or not getting the money they need. So we kind of highlight that on the website. Uh, we also have a Instagram account, sandcash.inc. Um, my, uh, she was a social media intern for me and now she works for me as a contractor. She's done a phenomenal job over the last 18 months to build out that, uh, Instagram account for us. So really getting that going. And I would say those are the two main ones for us. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Man. So the last question I've been doing everyone. So who would you invest in if you could? Yeah. I mean, I guess we're creating a theme here with the people on the call. But um, as you mentioned, being, uh, you know, someone who's been in a career for 15 years, bounced around, uh, you know, Philippe, I'm kind of tired of updating my LinkedIn. So Talent Protocol is super attractive uh, to me. And I, I really like what you're doing. Again, to echo Jess, not just saying that because we're on the call here. And then my two, um, my cube mates, Jess and Carla, who are on these calls, we've been up every morning working next to each other. So to watch both of their companies grow. When you kind of watch the entrepreneur put their blood, sweat, and tears to it every morning, you know, we obviously are a very social bunch at the house, but they, there's no excuses. They're getting up at six, seven o'clock in the morning every day. And when you want to invest, I think you want to invest in the people and seeing both of their worth ethics uh, would make me a believer to invest in their companies. Thank you, Steven. Thank you uh, for sharing all of this. And now we're moving on to Alicia. And hello there. Hi, Felipe, and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm hoping to share a little bit about myself before diving into this round. Um, about me, I am a first-generation founder who has had a 360-degree view of the venture ecosystem, from venture associate at Techstars to being a platform lead at an early stage fellowship called Day One, um, and now as a member of several different startup communities. It's been quite a ride to just watch this ecosystem grow and evolve, uh, which has led to what I'm building today, um, building the operating system for the future of what venture. Now, people always ask, what exactly does that mean? Um, venture, venture capital is, is changing. It's upgrading. There are more investors than ever before, different types of investors, angels. There are more scouts than before. Um, there will be more solo GPs than there have ever been, and more founders from all kinds of backgrounds are entering the venture playing field. Yet, the industry relies on legacy systems and closed networks, and this has kept innovators out and leaves missed opportunities for investors today. The, the, the system is just upgrading and evolving, and I don't think that, our, that we've kept up. So it's time. It's time to upgrade, starting with the top of the funnel, uh, which is typically the discovery, peer, the discovery piece. And that's what we want to start with is a discovery experience for both investors, founders, and communities. And in partnership with the venture communities that you are all potentially a part of who are already supporting you and trying to amplify you, we want to help level the playing field structurally. So if you're thinking about raising venture this year, um, definitely follow us on Twitter, close underscore round. Uh, we wrapped up a private beta last year to test our tech and make sure everything was kind of working. Um, and we'll roll out to all of you to support you in your raises at the end of at the end of Q1. So hopefully you'll join our waitlist to be a part of the biggest structural upgrade venture has seen. Thank, thank you, Alifia. I think you kind of also answered the question about what help do you need? Want kind of people in your waitlist so they can trust test your product soon. And what are you excited about the future of investing? So there's a kind of a trend here with Web3 and all that, which is kind of democrat democratization of investing. I mean, it started with the, the crowdfunding and kind of kickstarters and then Robinhood helped a bit and now Web3 is also making this a lot more open. And a lot of startups and Web3 projects nowadays, have, instead of having a cap table of 10 and or a few kind of investors, they now have thousands. So how, how do you see kind of this kind of trend of yeah, everyone, no, almost question. everyone being an 
almost everyone being an investor in some kind of project or some kind of innovation. Exactly. We think we think that there's going to be people who are, you know, everyone can be an investor. What we're trying to do, hopefully, is connect the right investors to the people who need the investment, um, no matter what that looks like. So down the line, it's we, we think that organizations like Republic, WeFunder, um, Party Round, all of these can be partners. And how you actually complete your transaction, we want to leave up to the entrepreneur, whether that's, oh, actually, we're going to go, we're going to go the Dow investment route. That's great. We want that too. Um, but it's how do you get in front of and meet the right individual uh, that is excited about what you're building. That's the piece that we want to tackle today. Yeah, and the uh, much needed piece. So, yeah, the last question again about investment. So, who would you invest in if you if you could? Ah, uh, tough question. Okay, if I had to pick, I would say Lauren because I think she is also structurally and fundamentally trying to no pun intended, uproot an industry that is that has really deep, uh, deep networks uh, and existing s- systems. So I just think, you know, it's, it's a bold, it's a bold industry to take on. And I'm all about changing, changing those things to make things more equitable for more people. So if you haven't heard her pitch yet, I hope you'll listen. Uh, she'll be yeah, up yeah, soon. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Lauren will be up soon in probably like 15 minutes. So uh, hanging there. She, she'll be next. We'll have Jeffrey and Lauren will be, I think, two people after the, after Jeffrey. But yeah. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you so much. Thanks, Felipe. For Thanks for sharing. Me. And yeah, let's welcome uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, are you there? Yep. I'm here. Hey, Felipe. Hey. Uh, welcome. Jeffrey is also working in a um, product about kind of creating professional kind of communities, connecting people on a professional setting. Um, and yeah, very interesting how you're approaching that problem. So tell us a bit more about what you're building and why, yeah, why is that important to people? Sure. So the problem that I'm working on is, uh, matching, matching of people or two-sided matching in economics. Um, a little bit of backstory here. The job I had before starting labor was a consulting firm with a very flexible staffing model. And so there's a lot of looking for the next project, the next partner, the next client, um, which analyst do you add to your team, et cetera. And so the search for people is very important. Um, and it, 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 I realized it was really important to have some sort of tool or technology to facilitate that search. Um, what I found when I started. Um, the, the intuition when I started the project and what I found in user discovery was people look for other people through people that they know. And so if, if you're looking for your next job or if you're looking for hire, um, you'll reach out to people that you know, that you trust and see who they know. Um, and so the essence of labor is to take that manual process and put it into a technology platform that anybody can access. Yeah. Uh really interesting problem and tell us a little bit more about how do you plan uh, about that platform where we are what where you are what kind of help do you need where can people find out more about uh labor and how 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 they can help or what kind of help are you looking for at the moment sure so um I'll answer the first part of that um and then the second part um the first part is that the, the product is a little bit like a Wikipedia of people and teams. And so it becomes very easy to look people up and see who they've worked with before, um, as well as find recommendations. The data to power that directory comes from augmenting the employee review process. So if you're interested, you can log on to um, sign up with at labormatching.com, L-A-B-R, um, matching m a t uh, c h i n g uh, dot com and just do a, an informal review through the la- the labor platform with your team. Um, that powers the directory, but also gives you a lot of unprecedented insight into how your how well your team is working together. Um, as far as next steps and what I'm looking for, um, the MVP is complete. The beta launch is in process, and so there will be testing and then recruiting for a chief technical officer. 
Um, and then after that will be monetization and uh, pre-seed fundraising, and that's scheduled for the spring. So anybody who's knowledgeable about those, um, feel free to reach out to me. Good. Yeah. Um, super exciting as well. Um, well, kind of the typical question, uh, you know, it's coming. So who would, who would you invest in, uh, if you could? I think I would invest in another founder here who's also working on people matching, um, David through intros AI. He has a very cool product and, um, I'm definitely excited to see where he takes that next. Um, yeah, thank you. Maybe, maybe the, this is you calling David, um, are you there? Hello, hello. I am indeed. Hello, thanks, thanks, Jeff. I uh, appreciate you. I hit you right back. Yeah, I think it, it's li like uh, previously you planned with, if this was planned, it wouldn't work so good because, I mean, uh, labor and what Jeff um, is, uh, Jeffrey is building is also some kind of matching people, which is um, what you're about, David, about building community, matching people, both in your personal life and both with uh, what you're building, intros AI. Yeah, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thanks again for proposing, Philippe. Um, yeah, the biggest thing when it comes to, to matching people, right, is, is um, really this issue around, uh, around most social platforms today end up connecting you to other people's content rather than connecting you to other people. Um, in our heads, most of the reasons you join online communities and even places like Twitter is to connect and have conversations, you know, like this. Um, but the issue having, you're just relying on, uh, you know, someone like Philippe, you know, to, to take the lead and, and create these conversations and then be the organizer is it takes so much overhead. Uh, but imagine if based on your schedules, based on, um, based on your schedules, based on the things you're interested in, you could get a text like, Hey, here's three or four people that you should have a conversation with. And we almost organize it for you. So, so we're thinking a lot about what it looks like to be this, this you know, a few ways of thinking about us, but almost this chief introduction officer for, for online communities. Um, Happy to paint a better picture of that too and share some use cases. But um, yeah, as you know, Jeff has talked about in the past, you know, people matching is one of the largest issues we have. And arguably one of the largest issues that comes that that leads to loneliness, right? If you don't have people in your life you're friends with or or meaningful connections, uh, then then yeah, you know, why, you know, what's the purpose of life, right? It's like one of those things where where it's so fundamental, um, yet most platforms today just don't even think about it. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah, tell us, tell us a kind of a use case. I mean, we've, you've been experimenting with different kinds of companies, organizations. You have kind of, you, we, we can use interest AI with, um, uh, text with the uh, email and also with the discord bot. So that kind of probably, um, can touch different types of communities, three different channels. Walk us through a use case that you like yeah one of my one of my favorites is co-founder matching with uh with first round so first round dc they they have a almost talent network of sorts and the way they've used intros is they match people for potential co-founders based on similar skill sets or, or sorry compatible skill sets so you're an engineer and you want to be a designer or someone in biz ops well the best match for you is someone who's a designer in biz ops and needs an engineer so that's a, a type of question we've, we've created that that leads to to more you know meaningful matches um, we've also seen people match on similar industries. So another example, so that's again, a founder match, right? It's a, a use case we've, we've seen. Another is like newsletters. So imagine you follow this newsletter, like uh, Stratechery or Accelerated. The biggest thing is you don't, it doesn't quite justify having a Slack or Discord because you follow this newsletter. It's more of like a light touch community. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't same level of engagement that a lot of other communities have because you only engage with this newsletter once every couple of weeks. But if you got a text message or email saying, hey, if you enjoy this newsletter, have a discussion with another reader about it. That's a great almost social layer on top of this piece of content. Uh, I think that's what's really exciting about this is because it doesn't have, we don't have our own platform that you download, you just live in your text messages. We can enable these new types of types of experiences that really don't don't have the same limitations that requiring someone to join a discord server has, um, so yeah, one, you know, first round we covered this letter and even universities, you know, there's a, you know, university of Chicago uses us because they have a bunch of students who defer admission every year. So they're like, you know what? I don't want to go to school yet, but maybe, maybe next year they realize that they have their students make friends with each other, then they have a higher chance of actually accepting admissions. 
So it's a lot of cool, cool scenarios that, that we've experimented with. And now we're excited also about the DAO space. So I can, I can go into that, but we've, we've experimented a lot over the last year. And now we're at the point where we just raised our pre-seed and we're really just doubling down on figuring out which types of communities work best with intros and what excite, what use cases we're most excited about. So um, this bunch, and we still got to figure out what's best. Yeah, thank, thank you. I think that was very helpful to understand what you're building. And uh, yeah, one thing that I was thinking is that when we think about community building these days, we think about technology, we think about Discord, we think about adding more layers, adding more features. And it's very interesting to see what you're actually doing is removing the, those layers and that friction. So using the te technology that doesn't feel like technology anymore, kind of text and email and making that seamless and making, yeah, just connecting people. And it feels a bit like magic and people don't have to put in the work or understand a new tool. It just get magic, magically matched with <laughs> someone that they, um, yeah, can connect with. But yeah. Thank you so much for that. So last question would be, who would, would you invest in if you could? What person would you oh, invest I in? Think, uh... And it can be anyone in the world. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, if I can invest anyone, um, I have, you know, you know, I think a little, little bias with Jeff. So I, I think you already heard Jeff's, Jeff's spiel. So Jeff's for sure in the same, you know, same matching ecosystem, but I really, really excited about Jess's, um, just with the concept of having a, you know, turning NFT into a creator. Uh, and the reason I'm so excited about that is really just this idea of having the distribution for, uh, like for the creator all figured out. You, you go, if you go to an existing community and then you create an artist within that community, Every member of that community is going to be supportive of that artist. Thank you, David. Um, now going to move on to Lauren. Lauren, I mean, hello. There's, hello, Ra Lauren. Hello, there's Alicia. all you've been mentioned. It's some Alicia. people have access. Thank you. Alicia, you already have a potential investor in, <laughs> in you and your career, but yeah, I'm also very excited to have you here because, uh, your, your, what you're building is also very inspiring and exciting. And I want everyone in the world to know <laughs> about, about it. So yeah, tell us about first, I think the, the problem you're trying, trying to solve, which a lot of us can, can relate to and also yeah. how you plan to solve it. Thanks. Thank you, Philippe. Um, so the problem, you know, right now, when it comes to where you live, you have two choices. You can either buy a whole entire house, the whole thing, you know, even if you know, you're only going to live there for five years, you have to put down this expensive down payment, 30 year commitment, it's a pretty high barrier to entry. If you don't do that, your only other option is to light all of your money on fire every single month when you pay rent. That's it. Roots is, Roots is the name of the company that I'm working on. We're creating something in the middle where you're able to pay rent on a monthly basis and earn equity. You're able to enjoy the freedom and flexibility that I believe our generation wants in terms of, you know, being able to move from city to city as we wish without having a serious long-term commitment to our location. Um, but we're also able to benefit from the uh, financial benefits of ownership. Um, I think that our generation, we want to be mobile. We want flexibility in where we live. But if we completely forego ownership in order to do so, we'll be actually detrimental to the financial health of our generation. We need to have flexibility within where we're living while being able to benefit from home equity and the appreciation of that equity over time so that we actually have an opportunity to build wealth. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sue's super inspiring, the, both the goal and uh, the solution. Yeah, but tell us a bit more kind of concretely what you see kind of your next steps to be, what kind of involvement do you... Um, would you like from people, I don't know, people listening to this, other people, what kind of help, where can people find you or people can sign up to be the first root roots home? Yeah. So actually as of Friday, our membership applications are open. If you're listening to this, go to roots.homes, check it out, apply for membership. Our first properties are going to be between Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Austin. Um, we, again, believe that mobility is the future, so we'd like to have a presence in multi-cities from the start. That is core to our values, that we um, provide the flexibility that today's renters really want to have. 
So, we'll, um, you know, whether you're in LA, Vegas, or Austin, or if you have your sights set on being in one of those cities in the future, please do apply to membership so we can keep you updated on the properties that we are um, getting into. How else can you help? Well, we're hiring for quite a lot of roles. Uh, probably, you know, my favorite role that we're hiring for right now, or what the one that, you know, if I were applying to Roots, I would be most excited about the um, what we're calling the concierge within Roots. Roots is going to be a very premium experience. It's kind of like a white glove experience in the way that we work with you. You know, there are certain points as a renter that you have to interface with someone signing your papers, onboarding into the home when they, you have maintenance requests, all of that. And with Roots, you will have a really easy to work with concierge where you can just simply text, hey, uh, the garbage disposal is not working and the concierge is on it. You don't have to worry about that again. Now, it should also be so much more than, that, than you know, just somebody that you can text when you need something. This person, you know, they're going to help you out with like any Uber Eats gift card on move in because we know that moving in sucks and you don't want to cook dinner that night. We'll hook you up. We know when it's your birthday. We send you something. We're here to take care of you. You're really a part of the Roots family now. And um, we want to make you feel super special in our company. And so this concierge role that we're hiring for, this person has a really incredible opportunity to build out an entire host strategy for a company that wants to make people's lives better. Um, if I were looking for a job, <laughs> I would probably consider applying for it. Anyone who is absolutely obsessed and loves creating wonder experiences should apply. Anybody who comes with a background from American Express, Disney, or Apple should absolutely apply. Um, it, hospitality is so core to those companies' values, and I think that they would translate well into the ecosystem. Um, if you'd like to learn more about open roles, I don't uh, actually, we have a, a thread pinned on our Twitter right now. It's roots homes underscore R O O T S homes underscore. Um, at the very bottom of that thread, there is a link to a notion page that has all of our open roles. So you could go check that out as well. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for sharing. And I mean, uh, you know, the last question that I have for you, which is who would you invest in if you could? Yeah, this is easy, actually, because last night I actually asked him if I could invest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bitsy, teeny, tiny check, and I've never done anything like that before. His name's Christian. He has not been talking here. Uh, I'm ashamed that I actually don't remember the name of his company and tell you now. But if you want to know, please reach out to me. Is, uh, to connect you. Christian is working on um, bridging. Sen Sencha. Sencha is the name. Ah, Sencha. Is it, will you spell it for everyone? Uh, I think it is S -A S E N. T-H-A, if I'm not mistaken. Reach out if you want an intro. So what Christian is doing is truly incredible. He is um, the that is bridging the gap for community banks and credit unions to access DeFi yields so that they can benefit from that for themselves, their community, and their customers. And um, it's truly the Lord's work. I think it's really cool. It will really be great for mass crypto adoption. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, Christian could, could not be here today, but ask me if you are interested in reaching out to him and you can find Sencha or Christian, let me know and I'll, uh, help you. Bart, uh, thank you for coming and you're the last one. Tell us, tell us about, I mean, we, you came to lunch house building one thing, you're coming out of it, building more, more things. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about what you're building and what that exciting for you and for other people. Awesome. Um, yeah, I came to launch house building, uh, automated hydroponic systems for microgreens, which essentially just means, uh, growing microgreens using a water-based medium instead of soil and automating it as much as possible. So people can sort of just, uh, plug it in and have greens growing for themselves, uh, really uh, conveniently, and we want to sort of scale that production. So people have access to these healthy, local, sustainable things. And, um, as they, uh, you know, basically just target people who want, uh, this, it's really nutritionally dense and make it as easy as possible for them. And then the other thing I started working on while at the house was NFT memberships for sustainable real estate development. So a similar overall mission to focus on sustainability and get uh, sustainable development done so that people can have, uh, access to green housing. And we want to target digital nomads first who want to live by coastally, for example, uh, so we can have locations in LA and Miami. And if you want to stay at one for a couple of months, you would buy an NFT and that would help 
develop future projects while also giving you access to these really dope spaces. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really cool project. Also uh, doing it with uh, Rama and Megan, uh, which we all also are connected to Lunch House. Also, I mean, even like Lauren was just saying, kind of just the idea of that you are paying for and that you use paying for a house, but uh, also building wealth and building ownership. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it can be, yeah, can change a lot of persons, a lot of people's lives. And yeah, tell us, why are you, why were you excited about this project, the life vest and why did you decided to join besides, of course, there's a sustainability aspect to it that you mentioned that was what you're building on this kind of funding, uh, which is sustainable building, but is there, what else excites you about the possibility of that being kind of a, a project you're helping? Yeah, just uh, the sustainability aspect uh, is what really excites me about it. And just having the mission of developing more housing and allowing people to live nomadically easier because uh, I was actually, I basically been a nomad for uh, almost a year now since March, uh, sort of floating around. I went on a six month road trip and the world that we live in today is just not really set up that well for nomads. So uh, it's something that uh, it's a pain point that I've realized myself. And it's something that I think other people are continuing to realize as COVID has shifted the landscape of how we work and live. Um, so I think it's really cool on a lot of different levels. And yeah, but and where can people find both your projects, the hydroponics one and the housing one, and where can they find them? What kind of help are you looking for at the moment? Uh, you can find the, uh, real estate one on lightfest.com. Uh, and the hydroponics one doesn't have a website yet, but, um, anybody who is interested in microgreens or has, uh, ideas for sustainability and tech and business in general, um, I'm super fascinated by that whole space and I have really, obviously. So if you want to reach out, just shoot me a message. My Twitter is at a busy hippie. I look at my DMS, so feel free to do that. Thank you, Bart. Uh, last question for you is. Who would you invest in if you could? So which person in the world would you invest in? Uh, just in general, like as a person or? Oh yeah, yeah like a person. So buying their, if you could buy their personal tokens, who would you, who would be the first person you would buy the tokens mm -hmm. from? My friend, Akshaj, probably who, uh, you know, personally, and he knows, it seems like everybody, uh, he is, uh, really cool guy who seems to know everyone and is doing really interesting things. So, um, that would be, that would be my top choice as a early investor. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. I would invest in Akshaus as well. But yeah. Thank you, Bart. And thank you, um, everyone else that joined today and shared a little bit about their, their projects, their passions and their dreams. And hopefully, um, some of the people listening can help you. Also, uh, hopefully we could um, inspire and this was valuable and helpful to the people listening in any way. And yeah, we'll be back next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. If today's episode inspired you, don't forget to follow us on your podcast app to never miss upcoming interviews. Also, if you would like to share your journey with us, you know any hidden talent, or you just want to keep in touch with us, you can find our email in the description. This podcast is sponsored by Talent Protocol, the Web3 professional network where anyone can invest in high potential talent.